Britain's biggest army garrison. Where fresh faced civilians are transformed into infantry soldiers. In just six months. What's up? What's up with his? Now, with war in Europe, a new generation is heeding the call to arms. It doesn't matter if you're a multi-millionaire or if you've grown up in a council estate, we will turn you into a soldier. Get to the now. People rely on us to do the things that no one else wants to do. Trained by the army's best. This is the future of the British infantry right here. Pay up. Get up! Pitiful. We'll be all over here like a rash when I want. Get behind him! Ooh, man. I'm not going to crawl for you, am I? Hurry up! 45 recruits of D1 Platoon face the challenge of their lives. Like Joseph Stalin's taken over and it's a dictatorship. Not all of them will succeed. Who has what it takes to serve as a British soldier? They think they're at Pontins and they'll soon realise that they're not. Arriving to be inducted into the British Army. A fresh intake of new recruits. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. The infantry training centre at Catterick Garrison has been turning civilians into frontline combat soldiers for over a hundred years. Just embrace it with all yeah. you've got, love. You've done well. Each year, Around a 1,000 recruits successfully conclude the gruelling infantry training course. <laughs> Let's go. And go on to join one of the Army's specialist infantry regiments. Hundreds more won't make the grade. New recruits grab a brew, and then the corporals will come back, take you guys away. Waiting for the recruits. An elite training team with combat experience in Iraq and Afghanistan. Led by Sandhurst graduate platoon commander Lieutenant Wahab. Thanks very much. It'll be a mental battle over the next couple of weeks. We have a bunch of civilians and a bunch of individuals, and we need to turn them into a cohesive team. It's a massive personal transformation that they'll have to go through, and for some people, it'll be too much to ask, I think. Lieutenant Wahab and his team must unlock the hidden potential in the raw recruits. Only then can they be moulded into a battle-worthy platoon. Of these 45 recruits, half will not make it to the end of training. What's your name? Jamie. Jamie, what's your surname? Wally. Wally. So Private Wally, no? That's your new name. Their first test, survive a Q&A with their new platoon commander. How old are you? 18. OK. Straight into the big leagues, straight into the army. You look like a man joining the army. What's your surname? Stratton. Stratton. How are you feeling? Pretty excited when I started my application. Mm -hmm. I know it's like... You look so happy. You're buzzing. Yeah. I wish I had your enthusiasm. Like this whole time. Yeah. I've never really been uh, away from home fighting myself. I'm still young, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just quite lost. I think I just need a bit of guidance and to be told what to do. I like the thought of being on the front line. I've liked the thought of fighting for my country. It, it doesn't bother me, it doesn't scare me. It, it, it excites me, to be honest. I feel like this is a chance to make something of my life because at the moment, I'm just going back and forth with a dead end job where I'm not going to improve or get any better or any higher. It's time now just to say your, your last goodbyes. Not your last goodbyes. Um, <laughs> that sounds a bit ominous. Uh, if you just want to say goodbye to your fans, your families, and then we'll get them cut away. <laughs> you want to see? That's massive. <laughs> you will all be going, what have I done? What am I doing here? I'm going to miss you. Yeah, of course, yeah. I love you. <laughs> I love you. It's transitional. Yesterday, you was a civvy. Today, you're not. It is going to be hard. Make no bones about it. It is going to be hard. For some of you, it'll be the hardest thing you've ever done. You'll be doing stuff that you thought you could never do. 
See you later, yeah? Oh, thank you. See you later. Recruits who successfully complete their training will be signing up to the army for a minimum of four years. Family and friends, they've got you this far. However, we're your new family now. Let's go. Make sure you fucking shave now, I'm at your beds. Right, get up. Get your tracksuit bottoms on, a T-shirt. Waking up at 5.30, the recruit's dormitory must be cleaned top to bottom. It's going all right, a bit stressful, a bit nervous. Before the hard work begins. I used to do, a, like, a housekeeping job, and the first thing they taught me, you get creases out a bit more. When you're putting the pillars on, just go across the bed like that. It makes it a bit smoother, as you see. Five, four, three, two, one. Press position. No! Why is that water bottle here? Where's that water bottle supposed to be? In the presser position. In, stay in the fucking presser position. Move that water bottle over there now. Go. These will continue to pulse until you're back. Hurry up. Hurry up, Ben. Pass out in six months' time. The recruits need to be in peak physical condition. So I said squats first, didn't I? Ten squats, ten lunges, alternating, which means ten either side. Fucking listening. They'll complete a series of gruelling physical and mental challenges. Press with no! To equip them with the skills needed to survive on the battlefield. Grenade! Yeah! When you hear grenade, you jump the fuck down and you get your belt buckle on the fucking floor. It's a fucking grenade. Hurry the fuck up at the rear, you lot. Get up, then. Well, I'm looking at them to chuck themselves wholeheartedly into it. Uh, so if we say jump, they jump. If they if we say cool, they cool. To join, they've all had to pass a basic fitness test. Clear. Clear. But that's nothing compared to what Corporal O'Connor has got in store for them. Right, you've got 10 seconds to get your kit on. Hurry up. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Get your kit on then. What's going to happen now? We're going to go into the obstacles. Then you're going to dress two ranks facing that first obstacle. Yes, sir. Good. The assault course is a fearsome test of their fitness for battle. 28 obstacles crammed into half a kilometre of tough terrain. For some of the recruits, it will be the roughest physical challenge they've ever undertaken. To pass, they must display controlled aggression and agility. Five foot wall then. He's going to attack this as fast and hard and as aggressive as he can. Notice how he's low profile at all times. Everyone happy? Yes, sir. Good. Hands nice and high on the rope, using that momentum and weight to swing all the way across. So he's going to walk all the way up. He's going to clamp as hard as he can with his feet and the rope in between his legs. From there, he's going to hand to hand come all the way down the rope. Everyone happy? Yes, yes sir. Very simple, isn't it? Do as you've been shown. Good, there we go. Training alongside the male recruits are four women. Hurry up, let's go! 18-year-old Olivia Hall Beakhouse has only just left college. She's hoping to follow in the footsteps of her military father. Hurry the fuck up! Good, there we go. Growing up, I've always been tomboyish. Being a female, I don't think I'm going to be able to meet some of the standards. However, I do think I have the determination to get over them. Now, faster, faster, let's go. We have mixed feelings of her going in because, of course, you've got the, the troubles on at the moment. Oh, we sort of affectionately refer to her as the pocket rocket. She's strong as an ox and she is very, very fit. The fact that she's chosen the more difficult element of being a female in the infantry. You know, so no, we're very, very proud of her. It's not going too bad. It's, I'm quite nervous for this one because it's a lot higher, but I think it should be okay. She's gonna fall. Obstacle 19, the wall. A 15 foot rope climb followed by a scramble over the top. Get up that rope. Have the will to get up. Get up, let's go. Pull your body up, let's go. 
I don't want to be looked at as like not being able to do what the lads can do, so it is important for me to try my hardest at fitness. Yeah, good, it's not pretty, just make it work, just make it work. Yes, that's it, you want to get up there, come on. So I don't care if I get the best, I just want people to know that I'm trying. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Good. Hold the cow so if flew over the monkey bars like a little orangutan. It wasn't until 2018 that women were allowed to join the infantry to fight on the front line. Want to get up there, want to get up there, let's go. One more try, let's go. Let's go. They make up less than 1% of new recruits each year. Stop hesitating when you come to the wall. Attack the wall. And are expected to meet the same physical standards as the men. How many times do I have to say it? Go around, just round, just round. So it's not quite what we expect at the moment. A uh, bit painful to watch. There's a lot of hesitation. It's not very graceful. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Don't fucking move your hands. 28 obstacles complete, but one last surprise in store to cap it off. Good, straight up and over, let's go! The Mud Trench. A 10-metre-long freezing cold water crawl designed to replicate battlefield conditions. Hey! Hey, get down! Get over! Get over! Get going! Get going! Get fucking going! You want to be fucking in the team? Oh, they just in the fucking team! Nothing can prepare you for coming to the army. Get down on your back, buckle! So I think I uh, underestimated it all and underprepared. For one of the youngest recruits in the platoon, 17-year-old Callum Stretton, it's a shock to the system. You kind of just keep your head above, considering it's probably got piss and shit in it. It's not something you want to be ingesting. Yeah, cold water therapy is good for you. Good, smiling. Why is no one else smiling? <laughs> <laughs> By the end of training, all recruits will have to improve their fitness if they hope to pass the course. It's just frustrating, isn't it, to see all these, well, not even soldiers, that just can't even get over a wall. It breaks me every time we go. Doesn't matter where they come from, they're all equally as shit as, the, as each other. <laughs> The recruits are continually assessed by the training team to ensure they meet the army standards. You've got a poor attitude, he's very yeah. lazy, he's like a slob. Just constantly complaining about being tired. Like, I'm fucking tired, really? I'm sore, right? Shut the fuck up. Anyone struggling will be put on notice and could be forced to start the course again, or worse, handed their marching orders. He's the most docile person I've ever met in my life. Got nothing about him. I just don't want to hear him or see him, his face ever again. In the first few weeks, many recruits have second thoughts about their decision to join up. The shock of capture that the recruits will feel when they arrive here. They're told what to wear, what to eat, when to eat. That does not look appetising. You're going to eat it? When to go to the toilet, when to drink, where to sleep, when to go to sleep. Every part of their lives are managed by us. Very early on, that's when you see the first wobbles. One recruit has already decided that the infantry is not for him. I thought it was going to be uh, a lot easier mentally, I guess. Um, and uh, yeah, I suppose I realise I'm not not that mentally strong. I suppose you could say he just doesn't want to be here. I've given a I like a disappointed dad talk, but there's not much we can do at the minute. Hey, <sighs> right, come up to the office. It is frustrating, and I don't think he's seen enough of the army to be able to warrant leaving. So maybe that's not the man we want in the army anymore. Sweet, all right. Okay. Hey, all the best. Yeah. For the 44 that remain, a back to basics session with Corporal White. 
pull your foreskin back, wash behind your foreskin. When you're doing your arse, get in there, dig it out, right? You don't, I don't want you coming out of the shower, still the winnets hanging off your arse. Infanteers must have impeccable hygiene to avoid ailments such as trench foot and crotch rot. I use one of these, okay? It's good for exfoliating, isn't it? A bit of soap and that, yeah? Work it into your skin and it'll pull all the dirt out of the pores, all right? I don't think the recruits realise what they've signed up for nowadays when they come to Carteret. They've lived a very sheltered life from coming out of school, very immature. I've had recruits before that can't tie their own shoelaces. <laughs> so when you've got to teach a grown man how to tie a shoelace, it's a bit of an eye opener. Some of you might not have to shave, okay? You shaved before, yeah? But some of you might just get little bits of bum fluff, all right? You're still gonna shave the whole of your face. I'm finding it like a big change in my life, like getting up and like having a shave every day. I'm used to having a beard. You get right up close, so you got no whiskey around your nose. The information I'm receiving, it's a bit full on because it's a hundred things shot at you in the space of an hour and a half. You make a mess, you fucking clean it up. Recruits must quickly learn the rules of army life. There's a right way and a wrong way to address your superiors. Corporal. I am. I am Private Dryden, number 3037. No. Don't two, say two. number. Don't say it? No. no. So if, so if I was saying it, I would say, Corporal, I am three zero oh, one eight. Number first. Yeah. Corporal, I am Private Dryden, three zero three seven six two. Have I done it wrong again? Number first. Like affairs, you're not used to being that respectful to people. Yeah. So that's just a guide. Yeah. You don't say it. Right. All right. You just say what you are. So your number, your rank, your name. I am. I am number three. Yeah. No, I don't say number. Just say your, I say am your say number. Your number. I never used to walk up with my teacher in school and be like, <laughs> Corporal Jones, can I have a pen, please? Like, it's, like I used to laugh at stuff like that. Corporal, I am 3037 6229, Private Dryden, wishing to join the Yorkshire Regiment, wanting to speak to uh, Corporal White. Yay! <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm just yeah. wanting to know the postal <laughs> address, if you do know it. <laughs> right, thank you, Corporal. <gasps> Corporal, I didn't study hard. It was, I didn't think it was for me, cos I always thought I was going to be a footballer. It was my dream, more than a dream. I got signed on academies. I've been Middlesbrough, Aston Villa, Newcastle. When I got rejected, it all hit me. I lost my confidence. It hit me like a ton of bricks. My mum was the one that said to me, why don't you go in the army? Because there's nothing much going around here for you. Living in Middlesbrough, it's just dead-end jobs, just warehouse work. I'm wasting my time. It's a big thing for me, going to see the world, because the world's a lot bigger than Middlesbrough and England. I, I just I can't wait to go to countries that, I've, that aren't even on the map. Yeah, hey, let's hurry the fuck up. Yeah, fucking move on. Give you the fucking time and you're now late. Just days ago, the recruits were civilians. It's the wrong fucking hat. Some had only just left school. Now, they're being handed a deadly weapon. I'm 19, just your surname, sorry. I've seen loads of people marching with big guns and the big bad boys. They're massive, yeah. It looks like a good heavy machine. Yeah, I can't wait. Are we happy with that? Yes, Corporal. Have we seen that? Yes, Corporal. The SA-80 5.5 6mm assault rifle has protected British troops for over 35 years in major operations from Bosnia to Afghanistan. Comprised of 15 separate component parts, it's capable of a high rate of accurate rapid fire, up to 300 metres. Learning how to master this weapon without jamming the mechanism is one of the foundations of any infantry soldier's training. Pull back on the cocking handle. Yeah. And hold back on the holding opening catch. Okay. Pull it back. Push down on the holding opening catch. Oh, push down. 
Has everyone managed to do that? <laughs> I think I've got a job in my hands of driving. He's just a bit of a clown, really. I think he means well, but he's just... He's just not there at the minute. Before being allowed to discharge their weapons... Check the chamber. Body face to the ball. Recruits must demonstrate they can strip and reassemble the SA-80 under pressure. Cup the back of the rifle to make sure the spring doesn't go flying out. Always push the pins back in. Cock and handle off. Bolt out. A lot of them panic and struggle with that, even though it's pretty simple. I didn't like the thought of failing. I just want to get it right straight away, because I know all them will, so I want to. What we need to do is take control of the weapon systems. Can I have my rifle? Wow, this is different, this. Dryden is struggling to get the holding open catch into position. Pause, OK? Correct yourself. Go back to the start and have a little think about what drill you're doing. Right, Dryden, put that rifle to the side, dress out the room, take a deep breath and dress back in. What he's trying to do is, like, he's taking it in, but he's not opening his mind, he's not taking it in, he's not listening. In one of you, you are. And you're back in the room. OK? Yes, go on. Listen in. Stop flapping, yeah? It is. Yeah, what I want you to do is reassemble your rifles. Got there in the end, didn't we? Congratulations, you both passed. Thank oh. fuck for that. <laughs> Fucking flapping like fuck. <laughs> Dryden. You know, he's all over the place, he's a bit of a mess. And he needs to get a grip, because if he can't correct all the mistakes that he's making, you know, he could potentially find it quite hard to pass out with this place. There's no room for any more mistakes. On the range, they will be firing their weapons for the first time, using live ammunition. This rifle is a 5.56 caliber round. Didn't you listen to what your pals have been telling you about that they're fucking playing Call of Duty and that? Well, the rifle's obviously invented to inflict casualties on an enemy. That, that might play in some of their heads, however, these guys and girls may find themselves in the front line using that weapon system to protect Britain. In particular, what's going on nowadays, they might need to use that sooner rather than later. How are you feeling straight in? Nervous. Do you have a thing that exposed you? Position and hold, all that sort of stuff, you'll be fine. Right. Not to worry about it. Stop it's being a fanny. At just 17, Private Stretton is still too young to buy a pint of beer. He's now about to discharge a firearm. Stretton, he's fucking flapping like a, a budgie, isn't he? You think he's got to be a big, like a shooting a cannon? Put your shoulder now, get the fire position in your shoulder. I'm a slim, fragile guy, Sergeant. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll change that. All right, this is what, this is what it's like. <laughs> That's it. That. Can you handle that? Yeah. Have a good camp. Easy. <laughs> Not to worry about it, you're fine. Say it's nothing to be nervous about, but it is a quite quite a serious thing. You don't wanna you don't wanna accidentally shoot someone or hurt yourself or anyone else around you. And just coming to grips with it all, I mean, it's quite scary, it's quite intimidating, it's it's a rifle, it's used to take life, it's the reality of uh, becoming a soldier and what you have to do is it's a lot to get a grip of. Range control is RCOB range. Can I get clearance of fire, please? Over. Recruits will be aiming at a target known in the army as the Charging Man. It's designed to desensitise them to the reality of shooting at a real person. The recruits are trained to aim for centre mass, an area of the chest encompassing the heart and other vital organs. To show they can hit the target effectively, they must fire rounds into groups no larger than 65 millimetres from edge to edge. Get on your lane. That's you. Dryden. 
Keep the weapon pointed down the range. The training team are looking for potential sharpshooters who stay calm under pressure. Dryden, stop looking left and right and just do what you're fucking told. The tricky part is keeping the butt of the rifle lodged into the shoulder to make sure the recoil doesn't affect accuracy. Ready? Go on. So dress forwards with your weapons now. Is this the best one? Uh, yeah, I believe so. That would have been my best weapon. Why couldn't it? It's never a yes no with you, is it? No. <laughs> I'm a very uncertain person. 48. 48. 48? That's good for them. Wow, I'm buzzing with that. It should be ours. Standard for 65 millimetres. 65 is what? Yeah. yeah. You'll get 48, so you've passed. Not everyone's shooting is as accurate as Private Stretton's. Fucking hell, Dryden. Don't even know what mate that. Right. So I'm guessing them, t them two are there. No, them two are that one. Yeah? You falling from the hip? What's going on? Fucking shotgun. We'll get there, don't worry. I was just a bit fucking nervous because I just didn't know what was actually like, how bad the kickback was going to be. I didn't know. Like the recoil on it and that. Cool. I know it now. Oh, that group was there. Dryden was like, there. <laughs> what was Dryden's group for that? I'm not gonna... He didn't get it was one. about like that. About 500 meters. <laughs> Private Dryden's groupings make him the worst shot in the platoon. If it's in him, we'll find it. There's a marksman in him somewhere. I don't think we will. It was pretty shocking. It looked like he was firing a shotgun, not a rifle, because the holes were just dotted about everywhere. We'll find a soldier in there somewhere, and we'll start to dial that in. Although Private Stretton proved himself on the range, the reality of becoming a soldier is hitting home. I don't think I'm enjoying this as much as I thought I would. I think if I leave now, I can go grow up a little, Study a bit of plumbing. Yeah. Come back in like a couple of years' time. God, you just think you're just too young for it all? Just too. Uh, yeah. I mean, you are 17, you aren't even an adult yet, do you know what I mean? And like, this is adult shit at the end of the day. And like, we're getting into all the fun stuff now. Like, this is the fun shit. Man, I think our definitions are fun. Are a yeah, bit different, true. to be honest. End of the day, you've got to do what's best for you, what you think's best for you. Nobody can make this decision for you. I think I'm really struggling at the moment. I don't think I could go off and fight people. You know, that guy that'll go and fix your toilet and, you, you know, you can have a laugh with. You know, that laid-back guy rather than that violent, angry, shouting, killing machine. I don't think that's me. I'm not a killer. <laughs> what? It cuts it Jesus, down. Straight in the eye. I'd flip it, but I'm worried that the toppings would just fall off. <laughs> when he told me he was joining the army, I just thought, no, you're not. I felt like it was just a pipe dream, like he'd been playing too much Call of Duty. That, you know, that was his thing, his, his favourite games, like Under Siege, going in buildings, shooting, and I think, yeah, you're just, you're trying to live your computer dream. <laughs> need another iron, though. I had, that, uh, I had to buy a new iron today. Why, why, why did you have to buy a new iron? Because I was cooking pizza on it. It's a young lad, it's like anyone, you know, um, pressure's on. You know, fuck this, I might have to go master chef. Over the next six months, Private Stretton must prove he's mature enough to be an infantry soldier. Wee! Wee! Oh, shit. Oh. Should we get my bumps, boys? The army is not for everyone. Some of them think it's a holiday camp, to be honest. <laughs> they think they're at Pontins uh, and they'll soon realise that they're not. We've got people on the radar. If anyone is below the standard, do we want to keep them? Then what are we going to do about it to get them above the standard? Two weeks in, and the platoon has already lost five recruits. The training team are assessing those that remain. I'll beat this. She's good. Scott, Scott, attitude's good too. Straighten. He's enthusiastic, but he's lethargic. 
you'll always be fucking looking about, fidgeting. He thinks this is a big joke, isn't it? He gets, he's always smiling, always laughing, he's always got the last word to try and say. Proper Jordan. Um, he's just making little mistakes at the moment, and I think they're all adding up. Struggling to master the basics, Dryden is in the bottom third of the platoon. He's wanting an answer for absolutely everything. We want people to think for themselves to figure out the answer. What we need to do now is to instill a sense of self-confidence within him. I think the easier thing to do is to teach him how to fire a weapon. The transformation of the personality is the hardest thing to do. Right, I'm going to go now. <laughs> you come say bye. Ten years ago, at the height of the war in Afghanistan, Corporal White joined the infantry to build a better life for himself. Be good on there. It's his responsibility to keep the next generation of wannabe infantiers in line. <laughs> I wouldn't like to think that I treat my children the same way that I treat the recruits. <laughs> Skills are definitely different to being a father. The recruits are teenagers that, or just come out of their teenage years who've got an hard shoes. They need that getting out of them sometimes. I mean, there is, there is, there's a time to have compassion, um, but there's also a time to be tough on them. So and you just have to get the balance right. If the balance goes one way too far, then you don't get what you want at the end. This week, Corporal White and the training team are stepping things up with daily room inspections designed to drill the recruits in self-discipline. We're prepping for a locker inspection right now, so there's a bit more pressure on today to make sure that everything doesn't get thrown out. They're looking to see who can follow detailed orders and meet the Army's exacting standards. Everyone's starting to flap a little bit. So we've only got a couple minutes left before they come in. So I'm just trying to get the last little bits in weird places that no one's actually going to look. Everyone is flapping. During inspection, every detail is under scrutiny. Space in between each coat hanger should be approximately four fingers width apart. Each locker must be identical. T-shirts must be folded to the size of a sheet of A4 paper. There's even a standardised way of rolling up a pair of socks. You start from the bottom and roll it up, pinch it in the middle, and then you fold it back over itself with a little smiley face. What do they do? I'm wearing a fucking arse. Yes, I'm not fucking fucking Well, help me then. I'm asking how you're doing. You're ignoring me, lads. Yeah, but you have all done it. We haven't done out. We don't know how to do it. Private Dryden is on the training team's radar. Hey, how do you want my phone like that? Yeah. With a formal review just around the corner, it's important that he passes today's inspection. This old riding face forward. That's not two inches. Quarterbell said two inches, didn't he? Yeah, it's got to be there. That's definitely not two inches. Fucking old banana skins and shit. Why is all that in there? Fucking hell. Look at that hood. Yes, Looks like shit, doesn't it? Yes, Carl. Rank slide. Same detail. None of these socks look like smiley faces, do they? They look more like fucking buttholes. That look like a smiley face. No, bottle. What does it look like? Butthole. Where's your toothpaste? Oh. Got a car on. I need to buy some more. Dryden has failed the inspection. Priest. And he's not the only one. That's a lot of fucking tagging it, you mad bastard. <laughs> Nice to see somebody's actually updated their best week from the lesson yesterday. 
Defa. Oh, you possibly move, stand still. I think the inspection actually went really well. I only got my towel thrown out of my mess tins. That's nice and easy to put back, so I'm well happy with that. I've literally just got to fold a towel again and that's it. Yeah, I've got my, everything shut out my locker. Everything, not one thing was left in it. So I'm trying to make it as good as possible. Lord of shit, isn't it? <laughs> Two, shin! Two will turn to left and freeze. Left! Turn. One, two, three, one! Oh my god, left and right. Mark! Catterick Garrison is surrounded by 20,000 acres of wind-swept Yorkshire countryside. It's here the recruits will face a series of daunting combat exercises. As infantry soldiers, they must be prepared for any terrain, ready to deploy worldwide whether on peacekeeping operations or to fight in remote and hostile environments. What you learn on this exercise will form the basis of your skills as an infantry soldier. This is the field. This is where infantiers thrive. This is the first time they've been in the field. Some of them look like children lost on a school trip. You all right? Yeah, How was that, York? Good, sergeant. Good man, right? Follow on. They'll be out of their comfort zones and they've got to start learning to be comfortable being uncomfortable, learning to thrive in situations where other people would just hunker in a fetal position and wait for someone else to help them. I'm going to teach you how we move around the battlefield. Uh, there's different ways that we move around the battlefields depending on the situation. Lesson one, use terrain for cover, the key to not getting shot. He's stepping lightly, moving any vegetation out the way with his feet. He's keeping his arse low, cos you use this when there's not a lot of cover. And if a fucking round goes over the top of you, it'll just rip your ass off, OK? He'll be dragging his left leg, holding his rifle in his right hand, pointing in the direction of enemy threat. Let's go. Hurry up. Right, left or crawl? Straight across, let's go. This way? Yep, that way, let's go. Left or crawl? Left or crawl? Crawl. You know what left or crawl is? Get on your fucking belt buckle. Belt buckle? Yes, that is your belt buckle. Get crawling. Watch that weapon. Keep that weapon up. Look forward. Get your muzzle out the dirt. Hey, get lower, get lower. Not bad effort there, lad, all right? There's a the cover. Get in it. Stop fucking moving, then. Fuck me, I'm not going to crawl for you, am I? Right, next one, let's go. Left or crawl? Keep as small as you can. Crawl past you. Perfect. I can't see with my helmet. Yeah, it's all right, keep it straight. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I shouldn't be here. Bottom line of it, I am pretty much still a schoolgirl. I'm only little. I'm not exactly like a Amazonian beast of a woman. For real? That just means I have to work that little bit extra. <sighs> smell like sheep poo. I really, really smell, but it's all part of it. They just look cumbersome and a bit slow right now. They're not moving with urgency or with...
purpose. They're just kind of strolling about as if they're going for a walk in the park. On the front line, learning how to conceal themselves from the enemy could save their lives. Right, so look into your front now for demonstration. Someone's overly camouflaged. You see to your front now, you see you notice a fucking a tree moving from left to right. Right, so next demonstration then, it's so it's camouflaged way too little. <laughs> it's got no combat clothing on, it's natural skin colour, all exposed. In 2010, the army redesigned their camo pattern specifically to blend in with the landscape in Afghanistan. Make sure you get it on your eyelids as well, yeah? So you don't go just got fucking white eyes. Try them. You're scooping it on your face. <laughs> That's now gonna take you about fucking two days to get off that. The principle of concealment is the same the world over. The natural habitat offers cover from the enemy. You will get 10 minutes to go in there, calm yourselves up as best as possible, whatever you find in there, and then just stay there and remain eyes on me, OK? Hide and seek. Pretty much like a hide and seek, yeah, but you've got to have eyes on me. Stand by, go. For Private Dryden, this is an opportunity to show he does have the makings of a soldier. He's in danger of failing his performance review, which is just days away. Well, when he sees all this, he'll just see up in branches. That's my passion. To blend in is like a bit of a uh, breeze, really. I want to win this. I want to make sure I secure this job. I just care so much, like, this is what I want to do. Like, I don't want to look shit. Minute warning! That's well obvious. <laughs> Time! Go back. Five metres, put your right hand out. There's somebody behind there. Yeah, there's somebody behind that car. Yeah, stop there. Whilst remaining concealed... And make sure you got eyes on me! The recruits must stay vigilant so that they can see and describe what Corporal Dean is doing. Everybody stand up. Are right, you just lock close on. Have eyes on me the full time? I did, Corporal. OK, what free movements did you see me do? I, I can see what you're doing. Okay. I can see you, but I can see yeah. what you're doing. Go stand over there, it's a Dixon. All right, close on. I've done three prominent movements from when I say, make sure you've got eyes on me. Do you know what any of them are? Just, I didn't see. No, OK, right, go stand over there. <coughs> right, so from the moment I say, make sure you've got eyes on me, Aye. did you see what I've done? I put your hand on your head, nailed down, I don't know if you're on the shoulder, it's got your notebook out. Yeah. Okay. That's all I can yeah, see. Good, not bad. Right, stand there next to the singing straight on. You just look then, obviously, well done, yeah. You passed, right? you kept your eyes on me the full time, which is what I say at the start. It's like we do when we do a recce patrol, yeah, we go out there to maintain eyes on the enemy. There's no point going in there and hiding and making sure you, you've not got eyes on, because then you're not achieving anything, are you? Obviously, some people are a lot more clever than, them, than me, but in some things where I'm just straight off the back, like, yeah, I've got that. Every time I get better, I'm like, there's another little win, like, and every time it gets better, you enjoy yourself more. Shut up, me. Be brutal style film or race. No. Fucking wicked. Are you missing home? No. <laughs> I love it here. Fucking news. I like my family now, you know. That's it, isn't it? The only thing I'm missing is my dog. This place is definitely mental. Honestly, it's got to be one of the most full on places on the planet. You've got to be the right person for the job. Like, if, you, if you're a sort of person that doesn't like being told what to do, it's just not for you. Mm, you're enjoying it, though. Million percent. Loving it. Loving Absolutely it. loving life. I fucking wish I'd have done it a lot sooner. See him. <laughs> you get any tea bags? I've got. I should. I think I do have a tea bag. To be fair, my rash pack's not actually bad. It's been a cold night, and the recruits have barely slept. My body's killing, like, everywhere. Even just getting stung by a stinging nail hurts so much more here just because you're tired. I do miss home a lot. 
but it's like it's nice to know that I've got people to kind of fall back on and to talk to. I feel like you do need to have tight bonds with each other to kind of pull you through it and I'm usually a lot better but I'm letting my mentality get the best of me. Lieutenant Wahab has a surprise in store. Fucking hell. His platoon must remain battle-ready at all times. Some unexpected pyrotechnics simulate a surprise enemy attack. We are trying to get people panicking so that they're relying on their natural instinct. Most of them will start to switch on. Hey, hurry up, get off, look, pipe away. Move, get pipe away! <laughs> Get low to the ground, get your body armor, get your helmet on, let's get The experience gives recruits an idea of what it's like to have their position compromised by enemy mortar fire. Dryden, why are you fucking stood up? Get your belt buckles now. Get down. Hurry up, get it away. First thing's going through my mind is hurry up and get my fucking stuff packed ASAP because I don't want to be the person making everyone nothing to wait behind. Hurry up. They must evacuate the woods at the double. Let's move! It's right on there. But Private Stretton isn't ready. Stretton, hurry up! Why are you still packing your kit? Get it on and get moving. In a real attack, every second counts. Delays put lives at risk. Get a fucking move on! Private Stretton, this whole platoon is waiting for you. Get fucking moving! Hurry up! Hurry up! Move the fuck! My platoon is waiting for you, Pop. Go. things get loud and noisy and everyone's moving fast around him, he can't really cope yet. Uh, he's struggling to build that mental, uh, calming nature uh, that an infant here needs. Being an infant here is a tough job. It, it's not for everyone. And I think the moment I'm kind of like weighing out the pros and the cons to it all. Stretton, where's your gloves? Get them on your fucking hands. It's part of your PPE. Get a grip of yourself. You're having a shocker of a day, aren't you? Take it off, on the box. The exercise is taking its toll on Private Stretton. The realisations of what we're actually sent out to do is... It's, it's not something I want to be a part of, I guess. I don't... I don't know. I don't like the idea of taking a life. It can be fitted with a bayonet. Close quarter fighting. Some of the things you're asked to do in the army, it doesn't sit right with me. I think everyone should join the army for the right reasons. Not because you want to go across the world and fight people. I think go because you want to help people. I think I could probably do that better plumbing than I could holding a rifle. Right, I've heard that you are having moral quandaries with the ethics of being in the army. I lived a quite comfortable life with my parents, so it's like, you know, trying to get my head around stuff and adapting to it. It's been a challenge, but I'm getting there. It's good to question, yeah. right? Because no one would want to take your life for no reason. Some of my ethics might not match up with some, some wars that have happened in the past, and on the ground, you can actually have an effect, right? So you can make the decision. So rather than sitting at home being like, the British Army's all baby killers, you're actually there. You're making decisions. It's quite mature of you to actually have that view and think about it. But if you don't think you could, take your life, then you're in the wrong job. Yeah, I know. Um, because people might rely on you, um, and you might be asked to do that during your career in the, inf in the infantry. I think I'm going to try and stick it out a couple more days, see how it goes. I might regret it as soon as I walk through them gates, because, um, I don't know, it's a roller coaster here. It's always up, downs. You know, you can be smiling one moment, miserable the next. OK, I'll see you in a bit. Well done. I think he's quite an impulsive character, so that might trip him up. But if he goes on this path, then he'll come out as a man. 
he's got a hell of a long way to go. He doesn't know what's about to hit him, I don't think. Having mastered the basics of weapon handling, the recruits must now prove that they have it in them to kill. Right, during this fucking lesson, you're gonna need maximum aggression and fucking speed to fucking kill the enemy. Infanteers must be prepared to kill the enemy at close quarters using nothing more than a bayonet. Corporal Dean, one thrust at the enemy and a double. Ah! Check B8, high port! You're about to be taken by your section commander. If you do not show the necessary aggression, you will fail the lesson. It's as simple as that. Dig deep, OK? Picture it. Make it real. If you don't think you can do this for real life, then fucking leave the army. Take this time now. Switch on. To pass, recruits must demonstrate maximum aggression whilst maintaining control. They can't just be mindless killers. They need to be able to turn the aggression on and off uh, when appropriate. Fix bayonets! Fix bayonets now! A lot of people just see red mist and anger and can't identify enemy or utilise their weapon system. We want uh, professional killers. And at points during this lesson, they have to go into a dark place, go into that killing mindset and actually picture killing that enemy. The bayonet is the symbol of the infantry itself, a weapon of last resort for when hand-to-hand -hand combat becomes inevitable. The current design features recesses on either side of the blade to reduce suction and help achieve a clean withdrawal from the enemy's body, doubling up as a saw blade and a rope cutter. What the fuck is that? Show me your long face! Good. Check sword. You can tell the ones that are focused and the ones that are focused by the ones that are just staring forward and just doing everything you say, and the ones that are just looking about waving something else. What the fuck was that? Do fucking better! There's some of them are better than us. Dryden standing out, he's one of the better ones, I think. We want to see that look in their eye that you do believe that if they're one on one with an enemy, that they'd come out on top because they want it more. It's Private Stretton's turn to find out if he can unleash his inner warrior. Usually they're firing at you, they're trying to take your life. So I think at the end of the day, it becomes down to being it's either you or it's going to be them. And I think that situation is so going to have to be them. Yeah, quite emotionally draining, especially if they're 
taking it for what it is and getting to that dark place. I mean, to try and induce this emotion, I asked them, who are they pitching? Who are you, who are you like, envisioning stabbing in the face? Um, so it probably could bring up a lot of childhood trauma and stuff like that. But uh, no, it's quite emotionally draining if you're trying to do this properly. The first stage of the course is over. Each recruit now faces a formal performance review, but have they done enough to pass? He's all about numero uno. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. He's a bit too cocky, I think. Always smiling, always got a good attitude. Very mm. pleasant guy. He's, he's not a very confident person, he's a bit slow. And they're all right, but they're just, like, just at the standard, if that makes sense. Each recruit will be called in one by one to learn their fate. For a module report, we've got certain criteria that need to be hit, right? Getting your effort, yeah. Your enthusiasm. Double-edged sword, though. A big Cheshire smile. People might think you're being cocky at times, right? So just okay. be serious. Yes. Get better every single day. That's what it's all about. Improving and showing me, showing the platoon commander, platoon sergeant, that you're not just a Cheshire cat standing there with enthusiasm, all right? Yep. Showing that you actually are a soldier. Yes, Corporal. Right? Happy? Yes, Corporal. Right. Be gone with yourself. So, Private Dryden is a well-liked and humorous member of the section, and Private Dryden is below the standard in some areas. He has the ability to pass this course, however, needs to work harder on his administration, both in camp and in the field. I think you do put in quite a lot of effort, all right? Sometimes in the wrong places. Cool. Yeah. Are you happy with that report? Yeah, I was expecting worse. How do you think you got on this module, Bobby? Not very well, Corporal. Why? I just don't. Because you're a bit of an emotional wreck? Yeah. And it's more in here with you than what fucking it is your physical uh, capabilities, is it? PMA, positive mental attitude, and you both and just smash it. Because right? you've got the capabilities and the ability to do it. Yeah. Right? Fucking such a fuck then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the recruits have passed phase one. Knackered. Good sleep. Have you got sleep? Won't wait back off. Their reward? A weekend off with friends and family. I want a bit of normality back in my life, like allowing a, a lion and that, and fucking just go on the fridge when you want and that. <laughs> Can't wait unless they fail today's final inspection. You all right, Dryden? Yes, And we'll have to stay on camp, losing all privileges. You clean this, yeah? Yes, Carl, yeah. Oh, shit. Didn't, didn't know it was a carbon. That's fucking thing, isn't it? Dryden, dirty head over in Bergen. Rotting. Why are you on your fucking phone? I'm just checking some account. Checking fucking what? Message off, man. Whitey, try one to speak to you. I've uh, just been on my phone and checked the message. What? I've just been on my phone and checked the What's message. What's in there on his fucking phone? What, while there's an inspection going on? I, I thought it was over, Corporal. What do you mean you thought it was over? Sorry, Corporals. All up again. Write down fucking Dryden's name for being on his phone during an inspection. Poor turnout and locker and post ex exercise admin inspection. Next one, incorrect hit. Next one, insubordination. You were on your phone when there was an inspection being carried out. As you're probably aware from the fucking thickness of this paperwork, you lost your weekend. Yeah. You knew I got for that earlier. Yeah. Why not? Why are you smiling? Because I'm in the wrong. You need to sign. Yeah. It fucking pissed me off, to be honest. It's a fucking joke. I can't fucking stand them. I'm too stressed to even speak. I feel like flipping this ironing board and smashing that window through. It's like they're fucking trying to just get me mad as fucking, and just try and get me to flip or something. Is that the one there, There's a difference from breaking people and mentally torturing people. It doesn't get any easier, it just gets harder. Shut up! What's wrong? 
You just shot him. R.I.P. Not thinking gets people killed. Take this punishment like an adult. Get a fucking grip of yourselves. Start fucking doing what you're told. Been a on, we'll be all over you like a rash.